Hello again. It's been a long time since I made another one of these commentaries. A long time ago, I posted videos bashing girls back in middle school. As to why I made that video, I remember because there was this one group of girls that refused to ever be quiet and thought it would be hilarious to make a video about them. In that video, I did what you expected any retarded middle schooler would do and overstepped a lot of boundaries that could have gotten me in big trouble should that video blow up. Well, it somehow did, and throughout the school, word spread a little bit, but not enough to cause much of a ruckus. The girls I insulted actually welcomed it and wanted me to do more. I made a few other lighthearted videos that I had permission to make, and those made their rounds and were alright. I am a changed man though, and have learned the error in my ways. I don't necessarily know what happened to them after, but I hope they are doing well for themselves and I wish them the best. Sometimes. But uh, enough of the past. It's time to tackle high school kids, aka the generation of the most retarded people on the planet. To be fair, I'm not one to speak. It could be that I'm one of those people too. But as the temperature of the planet keeps increasing and our intelligence sure doesn't, hell, even in advanced classes people can be extremely narrow-minded like a freshly sharpened pencil. And like a freshly sharpened pencil, they don't last very long. I had to sit through a class that couldn't count the amount of digits in a number with a few restrictions in a college-level class. It was very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a class so concentrated of people with dyed hair as well. Maybe that's a sign. People with dyed hair always seem to be the most annoying. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's a common pattern. Being in AP classes doesn't help the situation either. Having to deal with two years of the kids trying to impress the teacher by making and explaining JoJo references, I think that class was the embodiment of hell. But hey, I still passed the class. When it came to drama in school, I never got myself too involved, but I've seen a lot of interesting things, especially in the bathrooms. I went to the bathroom and saw a kid flood a urinal by plugging a Gatorade bottle in it and continue flushing it until it poured everywhere. I didn't do or say anything, and I just stood there and watched him do it. To be fair, it was kind of funny. I also went to the bathroom another time, and the entire fucking sink was just gone. Apparently, someone, somehow, was able to yank the sink out enough to hang, so the admins had to pull out the sink and replace it. How strong do you have to be in order to pull out an entire fucking sink from its pipes? Also, apparently someone shat in the trash can. Fun. Then you have smaller occurrences. Moaning, if you watch this video, you know a little bit more about it. Sex, vaping, a lot of it. Drug deals, all that kind of stuff. Welcome to stereotypical high schools. I'm gonna get my head chopped off for this, but one of the largest pet peeves I've had about people in my class were how often they gloated about their hardships, supposed mental issues, and joking about being depressed, when I think it's fairly clear to most people that they aren't. Mental health has become a fashion trend. I'm not outing anyone with genuine mental issues, that's not who I'm talking about, but making it commonplace is the worst thing you can do to anything about mental issues and suicide. Ironically, the majority of the people that talk like this are the ones saying more people should open up about it. How funny and ridiculous. I can only see it as a desperate attempt at a short span of attention, and making it common and popular makes it harder for those who do have it to an extreme, even harder to find help, and generally, extremely toxic. It really annoys me when it's put into that context. I think there should be the limit of how far you can go with that kind of humor. There's more that meets the eye to anyone. The mindset of being slightly inconvenienced and calling that a mental health issue is dangerous and could probably develop into actual issues hard to recover from. I do know that it's often used as a coping mechanism, however, making it your whole personality is an awful idea. I'm no mental psychologist, but the placebo effect is a dangerous power to use. The number of times I've heard people talk along the lines of that only makes it more repulsive. It's true that these more than likely come from personal trauma, but my stance is that making the same joke about how much you hate yourself and you want to kill yourself gets repetitive and annoying to the point where how are you going to actually open up about those problems, let alone fix them? You've cemented yourself as this person that is having issues and wants and probably needs help, but how active are you in searching for it? No one wants to stay in a mental trap, right? So why are you doing so much to keep your yourself in it. I know that I'm probably ignoring so many other factors, but these are genuine questions I want answers to. Backpedaling off the last note, I also despise how many times those same people shove political ideologies into any form of subject possible. It's amazing how easily they do it, it's like witchcraft bro, how the fuck? I haven't been in one class where someone hasn't said anything about capitalism being bad, or straight people being bad, or literally anything that is against a certain norm bad. Just shut the fuck up! I didn't sign up for this class to be told about your hatred against people and certain types of people. Having to listen to someone bash people that have no business in being insulted is so fucking annoying. It's also amazing how unbelievably wrong they are, shouting claims that have no merit to them whatsoever, parroting whatever else someone says that fits with their ideal. I don't have a stance on any of these issues, and I don't fucking need to. And if I want to have a stance, I'll take my own liberty of looking into it myself, not some fucking hearsay. I believe in equality. I believe in being fair to everyone, no matter what kind of identification. But the more it's shoved down on me, the more I could care less about it. Relationships are another thing. It feels like there are one too many. 
I knew someone who felt like he was in a romance movie. For every girl he stumbled upon, it became his life. I spent about three hours to tell this love-struck e-boy that it's a high school relationship and that it doesn't necessarily matter. But he still persisted. Well, no longer my problem. Most of the boys were like this. That and constant hotboxing. I would be lying if I said I wasn't the slightest bit envious of their relationships, but in the end, they never really lasted. Some relationships last, probably, but the ones that don't often end horribly, which is sort of sad. There is always something. I never got into dating. I mean, after every rejection, I've always moved on. When it came to making friends, I found myself being part of two different groups. My acquaintances slash academic friends and the cuck lords. I'll be talking more about the former. I never was a full participant in it because I wasn't particularly interested in being involved with whatever the hell they're talking about, but I do participate from time to time. They're the ones that always strive for academic achievement, which is what's something we had in common, so I guess it was only natural. To be fair, I don't consider myself a hard worker compared to them, but some of the people that make up their group are people I wouldn't consider self-aware. However, whether it's just them being them, or being my own personal pet peeve is up to personal interpretation. Let's name two of them, Pee Wee Herman and King Leonidas III. When it came to them, the two never allowed for much conversation and argument. I've argued a handful with them on certain topics, but the way they talk makes them extremely annoying to comprehend. Using fanciful language doesn't make you smarter, it only improves your ability to sound smart. Trying to be always logical about your answers doesn't also make you right, it just makes you seem like an asshole. If you can't win, confuse them, I guess. When it comes to arguing, you're only playing to win, and oftentimes you're not actually in the right. I say this from personal experience with group infighting and such. If there's an issue, winning the argument is just that. I do believe that they probably have the best intentions, but those intentions can't be relayed if you don't negotiate it correctly. I'm not one to talk, countless times I've been called out for the same actions, and I bet if they're watching this, they would accuse me of the same acts. But nonetheless, the point stands. As for the other people in the group, they've had their fair share of controversy in the past. One of the girls dated King Leonidas III and, well, things didn't go that well. It had all the same nuances that I've seen with everyone else's relationships. Handholding, slipping on the shoulder, love talk, so anyone would have believed that things would have been fine. Unfortunately, it didn't work out as planned for reasons I can't say. Pee Wee Herman is also having his fair share in the arts of matchmaking. Again, same things, but I can only speculate that things are going to turn out wrong. A few signs are already showing, but hey, what do I know? I've never had a girlfriend before. There's a lot more that I want to say, but it'd be too much to throw into one video. In general, I believe high school is a time to enjoy making loose connections with people that you'll probably never get to fully know. There just isn't enough time to comfortably do so. So where am I getting at with all of this? This does seem like a lot of stuff I'm throwing out there in no particular order. Honestly, it's just self-reflection I wanted to share. In these four years, I like to believe that I've matured at least a little bit in terms of how I see things. No, I fucking did it. Woo! I don't know if I'll ever see my acquaintances and other classmates at all, but I'm glad I could at least play some arbitrary role in their life. In my opinion, most of the relationships made in high school are very fake, with nothing much holding it together other than the fact that you go to the same school and like some of the same things. Trying to get something genuine is hard, something that you think has no ill will, to relate and rely on people who are willing to do so, but at the same time, to be ready for them as well. All we can do is pretty much ignore the faults and continue within the forged bonds made of string. This is one of the rare cases where being blissfully unaware is the best and probably only option. So, did I learn anything? Can't really say. Acting like an asshole constantly hasn't gotten me anywhere, really. Would I remember some of these moments in school? Honestly, probably not. Most of the cliche school moments never happened to me, so there isn't much to remember. With an exception, the moments I spent outside of school, hanging out with people and enjoying some of the few freedoms I had, because the best time to remember are the ones when you're in the moment. Good night, everybody. As a final note, I'd like to thank everyone on the Cuck Lords for sticking me for so long, and I really do recognize and appreciate every single one of you, short or long-lived. You've made my life and experiences better, and I don't have any other words to say except, thank you for accepting someone like me.